Hey guys, hope you're doing well and are getting ready to get back to the topic of costs. So we've talked a lot about different kinds of costs that our baker has to incur. Uh, make sure you're very comfortable with things like fixed cost, variable cost, what are total costs, uh, what, are the, you know, what are the specific kinds of costs in terms of variable and fixed that our baker has to face. And then the equations where we derived averages from total costs, average fixed cost, average variable cost, marginal cost, and then what those production function, average product, all of those things mean, right? So you, you probably saw a bunch of formulas and, and equations go by the screen. If you do not know any of them or not comfortable with the relationships, go watch the previous few videos and come back and continue with this topic. So I'm assuming you're very comfortable with looking at the relationships between uh, production function, which is the inputs that you hire and how much output they produce. And then consequently, we said how are costs going to change based on that. So you should be very clear on that. So in this video, I'm going to now graph average fixed cost, average variable cost, and average total cost. And in the next video, we'll graph marginal cost. And then I will do a detailed numerical example too in the next couple of videos, looking at the relationships between all of those curves. So this inf information uh, is a little technical, uh, and you, know, you have to pay extra attention in this, and, you know, but it's very, very important. Right? If you ever want to run your own business, you have to be very clear on these things. All right, so let's briefly review the relationships. So on the production function, what we have is the relationship between inputs, right? So you have inputs that you're hiring and how much output they can produce. All right, so when looking at the relationship between inputs and output, what we looked at and the production function is that the line increases very steeply. And that's because each input is being more and more productive. That's looking at the marginal product of labor. Make sure you're very clear on those definitions. And at some point, given the fact that our inputs other than labor are fixed, you're going to run into the problem of diminishing marginal product. So at that point, output is still going to increase, but it's going to increase slowly. Now, moving, taking that, this was the total product curve or the production function. Now here, we are looking at how inputs are going to change your costs. Right? So because we need inputs to produce, now based on how many inputs we hire to produce output, we are going to be incurring costs. So if we assume that up to a certain point, the firm is going to be experiencing increasing marginal product of labor, that means each extra worker is being more productive, now our costs are going to rise slowly because each person you're hiring is being more and more productive, so they're going to add more to the production process than the previous worker, thereby increasing your costs slowly. And at some point, which is labor here and output there, you're going to start increasing, uh, incurring increasing, uh, I'm sorry, decreasing marginal product of labor, which means your costs are going to rise steeply. So the shapes where your, your productivity of labor is becoming more and more productive and then eventually less productive is going to have an effect on your costs rising slowly and then very fast. So make sure, you know, we have drawn this, uh, make sure you're very clear on the relationship between these lines here. And then we also, I just drew the variable cost, you also have the fixed cost and average, uh, sorry, total cost there as well, which you'll see in the next slide. So here's an example that you looked at before. We have your fixed cost. Uh, the, you know, the fixed cost does not change when quantity is changing. So here I'm only taking the cost curve from the previous slide and looking at that a little bit more detail. And then your variable cost is going to increase depending on how much you want to produce. Right? So that's going to, again, take the shape that I said, which is it's going to increase slowly and then it's going to increase steeply because the firm is experiencing increasing marginal product up to a certain amount point and then increasing, uh, sorry, and then decreasing marginal product. And then if you drew, draw the total cost curve, that takes the exact same shape as the variable cost curve, but it's the addition of VC and FC. So you just increase this line by whatever fixed cost is and you get your total cost curve. So that's the, you know, the, you, you should know this. Uh, we've gone over this. This was just a brief overview before we get to the averages. So now the next thing is, let's graph average fixed cost, average variable cost, and average total cost. So it gets a little tricky, so make sure you pay a little extra attention. Average fixed cost, as you know, is fixed cost divided by quantity. So you know fixed cost by definition does not change. So what do you think is gonna to happen to average fixed cost as quantity increases? Think about that. And the answer is average fixed cost is going to decrease as quantity increases. For example, if your fixed cost is a million dollars, if your quantity you're producing is one, your AFC is one million. If the quantity you're producing is two, your average fixed cost is 500,000. And if the quantity you're producing is a million, your average fixed cost is one. So what you see is that given the fact that fixed costs does not change based on output, your average fixed cost is just going to be going down for each level of output. 
Right? So when I, I'll just do a couple of examples just to make sure you understand. When you're producing one unit, fixed cost is 100, AFC is 100. When you're producing four units, fixed cost is 100, AFC is 100 divided by 4, which is 25. And similarly for all of the other numbers. So when you graph this out, what you see is AFC is always going to be downward sloping. So this is what your average fixed cost curve looks like. It starts out very high, it never touches the x -ax uh, vertical axis, uh, because you know it's not defined when you divide it by zero, and then it continuously goes down, it never touches the x-axis either, it gets closer and closer to it. All right, so next, let's look at the average variable cost. Now here, you know, th listen to me a little carefully, average variable cost you know is variable cost divided by quantity. So average variable cost, think about as you increase quantity, what's gonna happen to your AVC? So what we've assumed is that for some level of inputs that you're hiring, which is variable cost, the labor you're hiring is a variable cost, they're gonna be more productive. So as they get more productive, your AVC is going to go down because each extra person is producing more output. When each extra person produces more output, the cost per unit of that output goes down because you're paying the labor the same amount, but the, each person is becoming more productive. So due to increasing marginal product, your AVC is going to decline for some level of output, and then eventually you know the law of diminishing returns set, sets in, and the, your AVC is going to start to rise. So if you graph that out, again, these are the same numbers from a couple of slides ago. Uh, what you see, you know the formula for AVC, is that AVC is going to decline for some level of output and then increase after that. So in, in a couple of videos from now, I will do a detailed example of deriving all the numbers and graphing it out. So if you are, if you're understanding this module or this uh, video very clearly, you're good to go. But if you're like, I still not too comfortable, watch that video very carefully because I'll do it you know, from start to end in detail. So AVC, you see, it falls initially due to increasing marginal product and then eventually it starts to rise. So if you graph that out, this is your average variable cost, it's gonna decline up till some level of output and then increase. So you should know that up till this level of output, this firm is experiencing increasing marginal product of labor. And then after a quantity of four, or somewhere around there, the firm experiences diminishing marginal product of labor. So that's the link, all right, between your inputs and output, and now output and cost. And now average total cost, you know average total cost is just a combination of average fixed cost and average variable cost. So it's going to take the shape of both of those combined together. All right, so let's look at that. We know that total cost is here, quantity is here, and then you get ATC by just dividing total cost divided by quantity. So 170 divided by one is 170, 480 divided by six is 80, and so on. So, and then also ATC you can get by adding up AFC and ABC. So on an exam, you can get ATC two ways. You can either divide total cost by quantity and get ATC, or if you already calculated AFC and ABC, you can add up those numbers and get this column as well. So that's the only reason I had the last two columns put up here as well. So ATC is going to be U-shaped as well. It's going to go down initially because your, so this is a combination of average variable cost and average fixed cost. So since your AFC you knew was very high initially, so ATC is gonna be high. And then it's gonna decline because AFC, average fixed cost is declining. And then eventually you know law of diminishing returns uh, sets in and your AVC starts to rise. So when AVC starts to rise, your ATC is also going to be increasing. And that's what I've summarized here, is that average total cost is U-shaped. Uh, so at very low levels of output, your average total cost is gonna be high because your average fixed costs are high. And then it's going to decline as output increases, and then eventually, due to law of diminishing returns and your average variable cost increasing, so does your ATC. Right, so make sure you understand the links between what has an effect on what. Average fixed cost is by itself. Average variable cost is by itself, but average total cost is going to be a combination of the two, so it's going to be dependent on both of them, right? So make sure you see that information. And that's exactly what we have here. Initially, a ATC declines because AFC is declining, and then eventually it starts to rise because AVC is increasing, right? So make sure you see all of those link, and that minimum point of ATC at that quantity, the minimum point of ATC, whatever that cost is, is also referred to as the efficient scale of production. Right? Just a, it's just, it doesn't mean it's the best outcome for a producer, uh, which we'll get into later on. It just means that's the term given. Now one thing, you know, before we, and this is true for all, each of these graphs, if you want to get total cost from this graph, all you're doing is for at five, when your quantity is five, 
and your ATC is whatever this number is, I don't know the exact number it was, so even if, it, let's say it's 75, your total cost is, you know that ATC is total cost divided by quantity. So if, if total, if ATC is given to you, quantity is given to you, 5 is quantity, 75 is ATC, you can multiply 75 by 5 to get total cost. So you can, you know, uh, estimate total cost from these uh, graphs as well. So just to put everything together, your AFC looked like that, right? Your average variable cost we said was U-shaped. Sorry. Your average variable cost was U-shaped. And our average total cost is also going to be U-shaped because it's, it's a combination of AFC and AVC, and it's above both of them. ATC is always going to be above both of them because you're adding up these two to get that. All right, so hopefully, at least the relationships should make sense. That's the important part for right now. So in this video, uh, you should have a very good understanding of how average fixed cost, average variable cost, and average total costs are drawn and what the relationship is between the three to get to average total cost. So in the next video, we'll talk about marginal cost. And then in, the, in a couple of videos after that, I'll do a detailed example to look at the relationships between the, these three uh, and, these, uh, and marginal cost and also a numerical example. So concentrate on the work and I'll see you then.